Hey guys, I got EFM Stories and you're welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be making a video about scholarship terms. So for people that are actually new to the scholarship journey, they're always asking me, what's the meaning of assistantship? What's the meaning of studentship? What's the meaning of partial, fully funded, tuition free? Um, PhD scholarships do I have to email a professor for masters do I have to get a supervisor before I can apply for my masters basically there's a lot of information out there and I get that it can be really overwhelming that you mix and match things and you hear something from somebody you're not 100% sure of what they are talking about and you apply it to something else that is not related anyways today I'm going to be clarifying things for you if you are new to the scholarship process or if you've gotten confused because of the diverse information that you've heard. Now before I proceed, please hit the subscribe button, please like this video, drop a comment if this is something you're interested in and as the video progresses, you can also tell me if you got value from it, I'm always looking forward to hearing from you guys. As you already know, I create content about scholarships on this channel, study abroad, basically everything to help you smash your goals. So. Come on board this journey with me now into today's video i'm going to be breaking down the different scholarship terms so that the next time you want to ask somebody for advice make an application know whether you're qualified for something or not you don't do things the wrong way yeah we've all been there so i get it the first thing is um fully funded scholarship now when you see fully funded scholarship what exactly does that mean it means that every single thing is fully funded i mean every single thing that is your travel, your visa application, all the visa application costs, all the different things. And even in this COVID period, things like PCR tests, quarantine tests, things like that are all covered. Your tuition fee is covered. Your living exp expenses are covered. Any other costs that you may incur, for example, maybe um, cost, um, cost to travel because of the scholarship provider or cost to maybe even go for events or even to do your master's um, degree if you're in a very cold country warm um, warm clothing allowance arrival allowance departure allowance basically everything you're doing is funded and this and this monthly funding they're giving you that's they actually call it stipend now stipend is or stipend depending on what the pronunciation is really but they send this to you monthly and this covers your accommodation your feeding in some instances they might give you an accommodation for free and then they just give you money for upkeep but basically a fully funded scholarship is you're not paying for any freaking thing so if you don't have money or you don't have enough money and you want something that you will not be bothered about then fully funded scholarship is the way to go now the next one is 100 percent scholarship or tuition free scholarship now when they say 100 percent scholarship or tuition free scholarship that means that the only thing that is covered is your tuition so not your living experiences not your travel to the to the country not your visa not your ma no not not your visa application process not all the other costs the only thing they are covering is your tuition fee now i must add though there are certain schools or bodies that advert well i don't really say bodies mostly schools that do this that advertise fully funded scholarships so they will give you stipends and will give you tuition free off but they don't get some of these concessions and that's why you see some scholars that win 100 percent scholarships and they are still asking for like GoFundMe and things like that because they're sending schools that word it as fully funded but they're not sometimes fully funded so you need to also check that but 99% of the time especially for big organizations like Trevening, Commonwealth, Mastercard when they say fully funded scholarship they mean fully funded scholarship now for tuition free 100% the only thing covered is your tuition so you're going to have to sort out your um daily ex your daily expenses your own travel expenses and sometimes it works for people because they can work and take care of themselves and sometimes it doesn't work for them now this actually covers um masters phd and basically undergraduate degree so when they say fully funded scholarship they're covering everything and then when they say tuition free scholarships they're only covering your tuition now this is where it gets dicey because people now start asking about the application process and things like that now there's something called phd studentships phd scholarships and graduate assistantships now this is where it gets a little confusing 
So I think I'll start with assistantship. So a lot of times graduate assistantships come with masters. So this is for a graduate student as a master student that is studying a course and gets a paid job in the faculty. Now there's a difference between a graduate assistant and a fully funded scholar. And I'm going to be explaining that difference so that you know, okay, that the application systems are actually very different. So a graduate assistant is someone that gets employed by the faculty to do a task. So this can be as a research assistant, so helping professors to research courses, or as a teaching assistant, helping professors to grade, or even take some undergraduate courses, or as an administrative graduate assistant, so help them with like administrative tasks. I even interviewed a graduate assistant that is a social media manager in a university in the USA. You can check that out on my channel. I think I'll link it in the description box below. But basically, graduate assistants can do any task among these, and in turn, the school gives them their tuition off, but they're actually employees. So the whole process is depending on them actually doing a good job. If you get fired, <laughs> your scholarship has gone. If you mess up the job, your scholarship has gone. And lots of times these jobs are actually taxed. So you're basically a worker, basically. So you have to actually get your, your, your stuff together and do it. And the way people get the graduate assistant roles is actually by applying for the job roles and also applying for the admission. And it's not even just a lot of time credit assistantships are not just like application processes they're almost like networking so you speak to lecturers in the department you speak to people in the admissions team you try to actually like put your leg in the table and speak to them and see how they can tell you about some of these roles because they don't often advertise them as as more as prominently as fully funded scholarships will so you, most of the time credit assistantships you do interviews for the job role you will even do some test run but it's not all of the cases. Most cases, is you submit your CV, that's your work experience CV that shows you're qualified for that job. For example, if it's an administrative role or if it's a research role to show your research experience or your, obviously, your skill set in that field. So basically, great assistantship is not like, oh, I'm giving you a free scholarship for you to study and then you don't have to do anything, just be yourself, live your best life, you know. This is, you have to work. So this scholarship is dependent on you working with us and delivering. So basically that's for a graduate assistantship and mostly master students. Now there's something called PhD studentship, which is different from graduate assistantship. Now PhD studentship is the same way you apply for PhD. So you would um, try to get a supervisor first, that's a supervisor in that school. Obviously, PhD is higher than masters for those that don't know. And I know that some people will be like, well, why are you clarifying? But a PhD obviously is higher than masters. And sometimes, even from undergraduate degree, you can actually get PhD directly, just putting that out there. But a PhD, basically, a PhD studentship, because there's PhD studentships and there's PhD scholarships. Now, a PhD, basically, generally, because I need to make this decision, distinction between a PhD and a master's. For masters, the way to get masters admission, that's for master scholarships. Basically, all you have to do is apply to the university. You don't need to message any lecturer, imminent lecturer, except as a graduate assistantship. A general master scholarship or a general master's admission, all you have to do is write personal statements, get your references, upload your CV, and any other thing your school says, maybe portfolio. And you get the admission you apply for the scholarship maybe write a couple of essays you do an interview and you're fine but for phd the first step is to go to the school phd department check their list of lecturers check their research interests check exactly different fields that they are doing what exactly are they doing and then see whether the phd you want to work on that's the the academic piece of work that you want to work on for those three years or four years depending is related to one of the work that the lecturer does and then you have to shoot that lecturer an email, tell them that, oh, you want to work in this field, you want to work in this industry, you want to create, no, not work in this field industry, you want to work on this piece, this academic piece, and it's related to their academic experience, and you want them to be your supervisor, or you want to know if they can supervise this. Obviously, I'll make a video on how you can pitch to a supervisor or a, PhD, a potential PhD supervisor, but the point is, you have to first reach out to the supervisor for PhD, not for masters, except the masters is a research masters. You know, so for a PhD, 
it's different from a master's so you reach out to the, the supervisor you tell them about what you want to do if it's favorable they'll guide you through the process you make your application you, you write a 1500 word proposal about what exactly it is you want to do and then obviously some schools have different application processes some schools you just get the supervisor first and the supervisor makes the whole process for you or you apply through the school to the supervisor and if you get the supervisor then you get the admission and then they consider you for the scholarship that's for a phd um scholarship or phd admission now a phd studentship is different from a phd scholarship now a phd studentship actually so you know the way they give funding for phd scholarships so basically you reach out to a lecturer is interested in the field that you're doing he wants to supervise you and then you get the supervisor and then they go through different eligibility criteria and they choose you maybe because of your academic merit and how strong your research idea is how unique how different and all of that a phd studentship is actually attached to a specific project so for example maybe the university or a research council or a charity are interested in maybe finding out some data or creating an impact in a field and they have a specific title of a phd work that they want to be created and so they call out for students or um, recent graduates or undergraduates that are done that are interested in that field that have the competencies to apply and then obviously the same process you try to apply for it you reach out to supervisor that you're interested in this you have the skills and then obviously put your academic merits and all of that you, you do your 1500 word proposal if, you, if the lecturer thinks you're a good fit to do it you get selected and you get the studentship now that is basically the difference between the two of them now a lot of phd scholarships or studentships tend to come with like perks so obviously there's fully funded obviously like i said before they're specially funded so that's like 50 percent off um some of them are just tuition fees of some of them give you um living expenses some of them actually take the form of assistantship so you get a role in the department or you also get an assistantship role in addition to it maybe a separate arrangement you know so some of them give you um stipend as well living expenses accommodation things like that to cover everything so basically the major difference studentship PhD scholarship, PhD studentship. PhD studentship is associated with a project. PhD scholarship is just general. But sometimes that is like the official names. But sometimes some schools mesh and mash and use anyone that they like. But this is exactly what these different things mean. So I hope that this was able to clarify any confusions that you may have. But the point is different scholarships different applications different arrangements have different requirements have different processes and it's best for you to actually check what is written on the website what exactly do these people want there are certain scholarships that there are no interviews there are certain scholarships that there are interviews there are certain scholarships that is just one essay certain scholarships that is five essays ten essays there are certain scholarships that is one interview there are certain scholarships that is three interviews the certain scholarships that they choose 1,000 people, certain scholarships that they choose one person. So there is no one size fits all for all scholarships. Like that is the first thing you need to know. Things are different, but the major differences are, are, are what I have talked about. Master scholarships are different from PhD scholarships. A lot of master scholarships are kind of like dependent on academic merit, professional experience, skills, and all of that. Um, assistantships are like actual jobs and are also dependent on professional experience and sometimes academic merit as well PhDs are basically research skills you need to show high level of research skills high level of a, a strong research background you know so one tip that a supervisor of mine gave me in uni is if you want to do a PhD scholarship one way to actually really help you if you want to get a PhD scholarship one way to help yourself is ensure that you do a lot of research work a lot of you try to get an assistantship obviously it's not compulsory but i'm just saying ways to help yourself try to get an assistantship try to do a lot of research work in your undergraduate degree in your master's degree most especially just to show that you're someone that's actually committed to research that's very important and before you actually even apply directly to this school 
it's very important that you reach out to the potential lecturers before you even make the application try to network build a relationship pitch speak to them but you also need to stand out and be different so don't worry i'm going to create a, a, a video on that to help you if you're interested in phd scholarships or studentship but you have to stand out you have to network that is very important and for scholarship master scholarship you need to do your research watch my videos watch videos like this research study scholars and try to get everything that you need i hope that this video clarified anything for you if you, if you are still confused or you have any follow-up question or follow-up video requests please drop it in the comments below let me know what you're confused about what you need feedback on or how useful this video was if you love this video please hit the like button please subscribe to my youtube channel please follow me on social media and follow this journey guys let's grow together let's achieve together afm stories is here for you bye